Why is rent so damn high? What can we do about the affordable housing crisis in the U.S.? Are landlords the villains? Today, we're diving into one of the hottest topics in the U.S., affordable housing and rent control. We'll unpack the proposed rent control measures by the Biden administration and what they mean for you. Plus, I'll share my hot take from someone who's been in the industry for 10 years. Make sure and stay tuned for that. There's no denying it. The U.S. is facing a monumental housing supply crisis. Even before COVID, we were falling behind in building enough homes to meet the demand. Since then, the problem has only gotten worse. We're now short by 3.8 million homes. So supply is super low, demand is sky high, and our population keeps growing faster than we can build new units. It's like trying to pour a gallon of milk into a shot glass. It's just not going to happen. In an attempt to address this issue, the Biden administration has proposed a nationwide rent control policy. While the idea is to make housing more affordable, only 2% of economists believe rent control is beneficial. While a staggering 98 8% think it actually causes more harm than good over the long term. So why is rent control so controversial? Well, let's say that this legislation passes and the government sets a cap on how much rent can increase each year. Sounds good for tenants, right? And in the short term, of course it is. But there's a catch. The property owners still have to cover their expenses. They have things like property taxes, utilities, insurance, payroll, maintenance, repair, etc. If they can't raise rents to keep up with their rising costs, it becomes a situation where landlords can't afford to make repairs. Tenants are dissatisfied with the condition of the property, it's like trying to bail water out of a leaky boat with a ladle. It just doesn't work. You just don't have enough capacity. It's a losing battle. Over time, this dynamic can lead to a decrease in the quality of rental housing. Landlords may struggle to maintain their properties because their incomes have been capped. And now investors will shy away from the rental market altogether. Developers avoid building new properties for fear of being able to make money on their investment due to this artificial cap in rents. This results in even fewer available rental units making the housing crisis even worse by unintentionally constricting the housing supply. It's a vicious cycle that we all want to avoid. It's like a never-ending game of Monopoly where everyone's broke, lonely, and in jail where you can't get out and pass go to get some more cash. So if sweeping rent control is not the answer, what can we do? In the short term, the government can expand housing voucher programs to help lower income tenants afford market rents. A longer term approach is to create policies that incentivize developers to build more affordable housing. Tax incentives and subsidies can encourage the construction of new units, therefore increasing supply and then allowing the market to find its natural equilibrium. We know the ultimate solution is to build new units. Units. Build, build, build. The government needs to focus their energy on the proper incentives to get builders building. While the idea of rent control might seem like a quick fix, it's not a sustainable long-term solution for growing our nation's housing stock. By focusing on policies that increase housing supply and provide direct assistance to lower income tenants, in the short term, we can tackle the affordability crisis more effectively. Housing is a basic fundamental need, and it's something we all need to figure out together in this country. It affects every single single one of us. My hot take is that housing itself is not the root problem. It's just the most painful system. We have a systemic structural issue in our economy where wages are not keeping up with the cost of living. Housing just happens to be most people's biggest expense. It's where we raise our families and therefore is deeply personal. So it gets a lot of attention, understandably. Most everyone is feeling a financial squeeze. And I'm sure you've noticed this when you go to the grocery store. Like the grocery bill is twice what it was just a few years ago. I can't seem to walk into the store now without dropping a hundred bucks. Knowing this, what if the government put a nationwide cap on what grocery stores could charge for groceries? I mean, food is a fundamental human need too, right? Well, of course we recognize that would be an artificial limit and supermarkets still have their own cost to cover. So instead, the government offers subsidies in the form of food stamps to lower income families so that they can afford to buy food. Again, this is a temporary solution for a much bigger issue. These are only short-term band-aids to a structural problem. People need more purchasing power. That's what makes things affordable. The government can't just legislate something into affordability. I now dub the affordable. Like that's just not, that's not how it works. The cost is the cost. But the government can step in and offer assistance to those in need over the short term. You see, the government has an advantage. They have this sneaky little strategy where they can just print money and run at a deficit. We the people cannot. If we try and print more money, 
then we go to jail. Tenants get evicted if they don't pay. Landlords get foreclosed on if they don't pay for their mortgage. And business owners file for bankruptcy if they become insolvent. So the key to addressing affordability is good policy from our leadership. Housing affordability simply is not achievable in the current political environment. The economic factors are challenging enough all on their own. But the political landscape right now is not that of mutual cooperation. Our internal bickering and politicking and grandstanding are just getting us nowhere. We've suffered enough from the division in the country. It's going to take collaboration between the government from both sides of the aisle, the private sector, and civil society to create an economy where all of us have the ability to thrive. It's this like united we stand, divided we fall sort of thing, and right now we are just very divided. Until we get past this them versus us mentality, we'll remain in a state of emergency. Landlords are not inherently evil, tenants are not terrible, and responsible capitalism is possible. And that's my hot take. What do you think about the proposed rent control? Do you have any ideas on how to solve this affordability crisis? Is it something that we can achieve in this country? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe and the algorithm believes that this video right here will best delight and entertain you. And I'm looking forward to reading your comments.